Ryan's Hope. What happened? How did this happen? Who did this? Jack. Jack, who's buried under there? And on General Hospital, it's double trouble for Celia. You've got the best of both worlds. If you don't like the way that a conversation is going with one grand partner, you can always start over with the Stop other one. It. Two for the price of one. Ryan's Hope, General Hospital. Weekdays. Mr. Callison, how are you? Simon. Hello. Cassie's at the dress rehearsal for a school play. Yeah, I know. Uh, actually, I, I wanted to talk to you. Mind if I sit down for a minute? Yep, sit. What can I do for you? Uh, <clears throat> I might have an opportunity for a job in, in New York, and I might have to leave Land Landview in a few days. Does Cassie know? No, she doesn't. I didn't want to tell her anything until I was certain that I had a job. Why are you telling me? Well... To tell you the truth, I'm a little bit worried about Cassie's uh, reaction, what it might be. I thought if you knew it, it'd help her. You see, uh, she told me about what happened with Nikos, and I really don't want her to think that I'm giving her the same deal. I don't uh, quite understand here, Simon. You say you're leaving, but you and Cassie apparently have become quite close. What do you see in the future for the two of you? I wish I knew. But I can tell you, Mr. Callison, I care very, very much about Cassie. Well, I uh, appreciate your concern for her, and uh, I appreciate your being so open with me. Well, like I said, if I do need to leave, I, I, I want Cassie to know that it really it doesn't have anything to do with her. Yeah. So. Oh, hello, Simon. Hi, Miss Lewis. Uh, excuse me. Well, you don't run off on my account. Okay. I, I won't then. I got to make a phone call. I'll, I'll come back. Thank you. Look, it was nice talking to you, Mr. Callison. Thanks. Excuse me. Buttering up Cassie's dad. Huh? Yes, yeah, pretty good at it, too. Mm. I'm almost tempted to believe he's really cares about her. What, you still have reservations about him? No, there's no real reason, except he's a bit too good. He's too articulate about his concern for, ah, uh, maybe I'm just being cynical. Maybe you're just being a father. That is the other possibility, yes. <laughs> How about one for the road? Oh, well... Oh, I can't do that. I, I have at least two hours of work to do to prepare for tomorrow. Oh. So, I spoke to Vicky. What'd you say? It is true that uh, they're thinking about selling the Lord Manning plant. Really? I don't know what is more depressing. The idea that they might have to sell the plant. Or that Derek Bland was right for once. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for the uh, steaks. Talk. Good night. Excuse me, please. Clint, I just had a, a call from Edwina. Oh, what is it? Well, apparently the National Intruder is going to publish an article about how I'm having to sell the factory to keep the paper alive. All very unflattering. Damn it. How did they get the story? I don't know. I don't know. An unnamed source. I'm going to be in the legal department first thing tomorrow morning and see if there's a case for libel. Uh, excuse me. Uh, what, what factory are you talking about? Lord Manning. You really think I'm selling that? Hey, so we have to. We need the capital to keep the banner running. Well, it doesn't seem like much of a libel case to me. Well, it's probably not. The facts are all true, unfortunately. It's just the way they present them they're so awful. There's nothing else you can do? No. Nah. The factory hasn't made money for some time, and the revenues are down on the newspaper. It's just a terrible decision that we had to make. Damn it. It only happened a year ago. I could have bailed you out of the banner, the factory, either or both. Thank you, sir. But... With all the money I lost in San Carlos, I'm sorry to tell you, Vicky, I, uh, I am strapped for liquid assets. And it's going to stay that way until this Christophori thing turns up. All right, now, Paul, just, uh, this, this isn't the time to go into that, all right? Oh, sure, Glenn, sure. I just mosey along. It's just a shame you can't be honest with Ken. Damn it, now, can't you see that my wife is upset? 
I'm sorry, Vicky. I know you got your problems. I'm going to tell you something to tell your brother. I came over here to make peace. He was pig-headed, feuding, and fussing. You boys want it that way. Hey, you're going to get it that way. And think on this, Clint. Your old man's going to win. Good night, Vicky. I'm sorry, honey. That's oh, perfectly all right. I'm getting used to it. All you two, all of you yelling at each other. I am much more worried right now about what those Lord Manning employees are going to think when they read that National Intruder article. It's bad enough they're all going to lose their jobs soon enough. I'm so sorry that all this had to happen. Mr. Narringer. I just got your message and uh, I came right over. Well, that's very good of you. It really wasn't necessary. Uh, no trouble at all. For the maestro, 24 hours service. Yeah. What seems to be the problem? I uh, uh, tuned it about uh, two months ago. It shouldn't have lost its tone so soon. Of course, with an ear like yours. No, uh, no, no, it's really, uh, uh, it really uh, doesn't have anything, no, no, the piano, look, the piano is in fine shape, you did a brilliant job of tuning it, actually, what I need is some information. Information? Yes, I was wondering if you had in your travels around land, you come across a Cristofori piano. Cristofori? The absolute bane of a piano tuner's existence. Yes, there's one at the Vernon Inn, and I don't mind telling you, it's been giving me an absolute ulcer. It's a beautiful old thing, but doesn't want to seem to stay in tune to save itself. Where? At the Vernon Inn. At the Mrs. Lucinda Shank's Supper Club, the one that they keep saying is about to open. You can't miss it. She's gone and had the poor thing painted white. Mr. Narringer, you have been of inutterable assistance to me. You will never know how much I appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you, maestro. <laughs> you have a special fondness for Christophoris. I certainly hope so. Come on, I'll walk you out. <laughs> One Life to Live will continue in a moment. Stop. What? Before you come in, I want to know if you did what you said you were going to do. Yeah, I talked to McConnell. We didn't settle anything, but we talked. No, Brad, listen, you're not coming in. You promised me that you would convince him to give me my job back. And I will. I just couldn't do it last night, No, right? listen, I'm serious. Now, if you're willing to help me, then I'm not willing either. Hey, you listen. I'm not in the mood for any of your games, all right? Take it easy, but, um... I wasn't serious. I wasn't serious, really. What's wrong? Why are you acting like this? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just have a lot of things coming down on me, and it's, it's getting to me, that's all. Can I get you something, maybe? A drink? I'll, I'll make you something to eat. Or something. No, thank you, not right now. Jenny, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to hurt you. But when you think about it, it's the most natural thing in the world, you know. We were, we were together for a long time. And I am, I'm just, I'm worried about it. I understand how you feel. You do? Mm-hmm. I know that if it, if it were Bo, and he were lying in a hospital, <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd be really upset too. I, but I'm not jealous, Fred. I'm not jealous of Jenny. I, really, I, you're with me now. And there's no reason for me to be jealous of her. It would be silly, right? I think so. Especially when I know. Oh, my man, I love him so. <laughs> <laughs> my man needs understanding and love. 